Coach Morgan. And I'm Coach Liz. We're your coaches here at the Run Experience. And if you've been following along, you maybe know that we like that type two type of fun where you have to pay for pain. Yeah. It's true. And if you didn't know, well, now you do. But through our suffering, we have learned a lot of tips and tricks, not just as coaches, but um, as actual participants in these races, in these trainings, in these buildups. So as coaches, we want to help you train for these races because I promise they actually are really fun. They're so much fun. It's fun. Stuff. It's fun. It still it's has fun. the word fun in it. And we want to help you out if you want to train for something that's more uphill, getting into those trails, maybe even those ultra races. We got a couple tips for you on how you can make that transition, how you can train your best so you can actually enjoy it and then get out there and do some running. So tip time. Bam! So the first thing that we'd like to start off with when we're building really kind of any plan in that base building is talking about strength. And strength for the hills is so, so, so important. Really building your quads, your calves, all those climbing muscles, getting a little bit of power, but also working on endurance. And I know Liz, you've been doing a really good strength workout. You yeah. wanna tell us, give us a little sneak peek? Yeah, so, um... Thanks to you, well, of course. Um, there was actually a great video that Morgan had put out. There are three main exercises, and basically you are doing step-ups on a tempo, so slow way down, okay? So I did that actually four times, about 15 reps per side, okay? That was killer. I also follow that with uh, some rows, ring rows, so that gets that upper body, so you get that pull. And the third one was jumping lunges. Those are the plyometric style movements that are really gonna work on getting that power drive through those, those glutes, through those legs, all of the above. I added that with another part of the workout that I actually had put together myself, which was weighted back squats. So using a weight vest, just the bar, because I am just newly coming back to strength training again after my injury. And also uh, <laughs> top that off with some walking lunges, also with the weight vest. And then lots of mobility, specifically on my ankles, my uh, quads and my hips. Yeah, and I think for me, one thing I always like to add in when I'm doing any kind of uphill and even getting into that like ultra scene is standing and kind of like what you're talking about with the weight vest, but I like to hold some kind of a weight here and then just practice like marches. And it sounds really simple, but what happens is our core when we're going uphill and we're getting tired wants to just crunch in. So if I can fight that and get stronger here while still working on a knee drive. So if I'm doing um, whether that's step ups or literally just marching in place or something like that, that's going to be really effective to keeping that nice posture up and open. I know we're both like, oh, gosh, oh, oh my god, my posture. Over back. Oh. Um, because when your chest is open, you're just going to have a little bit better through the drive, your whole form from the head all the way down to the toes. And when you're open through the chest, you can actually breathe a lot yes. better. And then when we're going <gasps> on hills, it's gonna feel just a little bit easier. Now this might sound kind of obvious, but hill, I don't even wanna call them sprints, but we'll, we'll call them hill efforts, um, are gonna be really, really important. Um, it really also depends on what type of race you're doing. Is it longer, slower? Is it more shorter, powerful type of race? Which is what we have coming up. So it is really important to have both that shorter, more powerful efforts where you're doing like 30 seconds or less up the hill and then also Full those power. like yeah. yeah like actual sprints drive with a really good two to three minute recovery in between mm. and then those longer more endurance ones where it's like two three minute efforts up the hill and then a really casual jog back down but it depends on what type of race you have but also what do the hills look like some of these races are going to be really really steep inclines where you should be practicing more of that power hiking or some of these ones are going to be more rolling and way more runnable right so making sure that you are looking at the course elevation on anything that has hills in it to not just figure out what the vert or elevation gain is but what types of hills that you are going into encounter on that race yeah so uh for my training 
leading up to our next race, I did a pretty good dab into hill intervals, those longer ones, like 60 seconds, okay? So I wasn't concentrating so much on that speed and powering up that hill, but feeling like the effort and really just focusing on form and driving through the glutes, Absolutely. driving out the back and using my arms to get up those hills. As I approached and got closer to race day, I actually started to do long, just long hikes. And I use my treadmill for this. I haven't had the greatest weather here in New England. Well, it's not here in New England right now, <laughs> but in New England has not been great weather. So I've been hitting the treadmill and I've been just sticking that incline from 10 up to 15% and just yeah. getting it so that I can feel like I'm in that easy zone and then pushing it just a little bit harder by the end of the workouts. So I went for about 30 to 45 minutes doing that uh, just to get a good feel. Finally ended up at a race, uh, not like the one that I'm actually about, we're both of us about to do. Uh, talk about rolling hills, like Morgan just said. So uh, it was a lot of climbing in the first three miles. It was Vermont, gnarly, Rudy Rocky stuff, but it really got my aerobic engine going because I had to keep my effort the same throughout. Obviously during that hill, I was a little bit pulled back. That effort comes back knowing the elevation chart, knowing I need to pull back. But then once I knew that we'd be going downhill, I let it fly, okay? And it was lots of rolling after that. So just holding on for dear life at that second half, which was a 10 mile race, uh, and it had about uh, 2000 feet of elevation gain. So I thought that that would actually be a good way to get ready for this race. It was 10 miles, next race is about eight. So I think I think I got this. We'll see how, how my legs hold out on this. Um, I think you made a really good point. We talked about like looking at the elevation chart and things like that, but also looking at what type of trail you're gonna be on, whether it Train. is way more um, rocky, rooty, technical, or if it's gonna be something that you can do the leg turnover on because it is going to be really important to practice that terrain because if you're just used to running on this super super technical stuff and then you come out to a trail like we're gonna do and it's very very runnable well if you're going downhill it's very runnable it is uphill too <laughs> but that would be you need you need to really focus on that opening up of the stride and yes. that power if you're so used to like power hiking and short choppy steps that's gonna feel really really hard so that's a really good point is making sure you're looking at what the technical profile is of the course doing a little bit of research out there it's 2024 I'm sure someone's made a video on <laughs> yeah, the race or has talked guaranteed. about it before <laughs> so be sure to check that out yeah now Liz did a race in preparation for a race which Two this is what we do. This yeah. is what we do. Yeah. Um, I personally, now this race, we are sitting in Keeler, California right now. You're like, I've never heard of that. It's probably true. Uh, I think there's like <laughs> less than 300 people in this. I think it's less than that. Uh, yeah. We'll put it, we'll put it up like right here and let you know how many. Actually, but, yeah. I think it might've been 50 at the, but that's an old sign. Oh, we'll no. take a look. We'll take a look. Um, anyways, <laughs> we're sitting at about 3,600 feet above sea level, and our race, which is tomorrow for us, is going to be eight miles, all uphill, and 5,000 feet of elevation gain. I know there's going to be somebody in the comments, what about kilometers? I don't know what it is. I'm really sorry. I'll try to do the math for you. 1,366 meters. I, I calculated it. Great. Perfect. There it is. <laughs> It's going to be a long, big uphill. So that's what we're preparing for. That's a little bit about what we're talking about. But going back to, we're going up in elevation to almost about 9,000 feet. Now, Liz and I both live at sea level. So this is also something that you want to take into consideration when you're looking at some of these hillier races, you know, if they, especially if they're all uphill, you're going to be going up. And even if you're starting at sea level, you know, depends on how long the race is, you could be going up into a little bit of elevation gain. So for me, I'm in San Francisco. So I made the trek up to Tahoe, spend a weekend up there being able to run and just do a little bit more power hiking, really just kind of working my engine here, getting those big deep breaths and really stressing the system on low impact, which for me is hopefully going to be able to pay off with that low stress, with that 
bigger engine output. Mm -hmm. So if you are someone who's coming from the road and really flat races, you know, this uphill training is gonna feel like a lot more work, a lot more. It's not more impact because when you're going uphill, it's actually less impact. But if you are doing a lot of downhills, it's more impact. So it might feel more impacty all around. You're gonna be working different muscles than you're used to. So that recovery process is going to be super, super key. And this is not just a helpful hint for uphills. This is for everybody. Um, Liz and I really had a four hour car ride where we talked a lot about um, something that we feel like everybody is, including us, not doing the best on, which is getting in protein for your recovery. It's just so freaking important, guys. For a, a very average reference, someone who is active, whatever, it's about one gram of protein, one to 1.5 grams of protein per body weight per day. Per pound of body weight. Per pound of body weight. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I said per pound of body weight per day. That's a lot of protein. And it's, if you're not kind of keeping it in the back of your head, you're probably gonna mess up. I don't wanna say mess up, cause that's not good. <laughs> we don't wanna say, well, this is not bad, right? We, it's just, you're not going to get those full training adaptations if your body is not able to recover, protein is the only thing that is putting those muscles back together, right? When we're out here running and doing strength training, we're literally doing micro tears to our muscles. Protein, this is not sponsored by this event, but protein is what's putting it back together. And if you're not doing that, then all that, like most of that work is just kind of getting uh, swept out. Right, so that's kind of my biggest thing for the nutrition side of things. Definitely. Um, I am someone who actually experienced low energy availability last year while training for a half marathon. So uh, come to find out that I just wasn't getting enough protein. It was just carbohydrates aren't hard for me. That's what I eat all day. I could eat potatoes and pasta all day if you want. But if you're not getting that protein in, it is so hard to recover. And I started to notice that I wasn't recovering. I actually ended up seeking help uh, from a nutritionist, a sports performance nutritionist to be exact. But yes, it's also uh, being hydrated. I think a lot of people kind of fall short on that as well. And uh, that's part of your nutrition. And if you're eating whole foods, uh, you're getting enough uh, fruit, vegetables in your diet, you're probably reaching your electrolyte, uh, you're covering all bases on electrolyte, but if you're sweating and you are active most days out of the week, you're probably falling a little short. I know I was and I still do. I have a hard time getting those things in. So just adding little electrolytes to your water and making sure, so for me, someone my weight, uh, I actually take in about 96 ounces a day which is about three liters of water for those of you wondering. Uh, that's something I actually track on my watch to make sure I'm getting enough of. And leading into a race that may be at altitude, uh, maybe higher up than something you're used to, you wanna be taking in more water uh, before you get there. Yeah, and something like, we'll just use the race that we're doing for reference, but if this was an eight mile flat race, you know, you have to think about the time that you're going to be out there. And really, if you're having that heavier breathing, that yeah. that's literally water leaving your body every literally. time you go. And I'm getting to that. And electrolytes are, yeah, too. I know you're loving that sound that I'm making. <laughs> um, but like, those are some things to consider. Like with those uphill races, you are probably going to be in that working zone, especially if it's really constant and you're just going up the whole time. With ours, it's eight miles. So like, you do want to be going pretty quick, but it's also like, you know, kind of that in-between weird zone. So you definitely want to have some kind of electrolytes in your system beforehand um, and probably during the race is going to be really helpful. Um, and once again, that's a tip for anyone doing any race, anytime, anywhere, any place, any distance, any surface. <laughs> but with this uphill thing, especially if you're coming from the road, that is something really important that you do need to think about. I know that was one of my hardest things going from being all road to going to the trail. I just wasn't used to running for that period of time. And like when I'm doing a marathon, you know, your, your breath is pretty steady. Of course, you're like getting to that higher heart rate and things like that. 
but it's way more steady I feel like going uphill especially if you don't warm up which I feel like I don't even need to say that you should warm up but <laughs> like especially for uphills up. oh my god if I just start going uphill my calves feel like they're gonna explode so like making sure I'm doing some dynamic warm-ups before any type of hill anytime anytime honestly before any run but specifically uphill like making sure you're getting that lower mm -hmm. lower leg getting them warmed up and ready and prepped to go to help you getting that blood flow going but yeah honestly all of those things really great for uphill specifically but can be used in flat road all the things but if you have an uphill race coming up we want to know about it because we might actually want to do it yeah we, we actually <laughs> invite us it. yeah <laughs> but I did say that I would tell you more about the race that we're doing you might have to wait just a little bit because we're gonna run it tomorrow this tomorrow like I said it's the it's eight miles, 5,000 feet of elevation gain. It's called the Cerro Gordo Silver Run. So you can take a little bit of, you can find out a little bit there, but we're gonna be filming ourselves going up there tomorrow. So you will get to see the hopefully not suffering, but just like that type two type of fun that we both really enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. And uh, maybe we'll see you on the trails or the road. Yeah, and if you wanted to check out this race specifically, you can go ahead and check out Ghost Town Living. Uh, it's actually Brent yes. Underwood over there at their channel on YouTube. Fantastic. And he actually made a video about this race. Yeah. So if you can kind of get an idea about it before you come over, you can see our Suffer Fest. <laughs> cool. Bye, guys. Bye.